And the first reader has to go there. I'm not prepared for this. You want to do those? Sure. And then the second one? Oh, wait, he needs a second one. He reads the last one. Duh. Yeah, I'm just going to read the last one. I'm just not going to read
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, so that we may prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria 
us pray. God of my giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire and gloomy darkness, and storm and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion, and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels and festal gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. On a Sabbath. Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your neighbors or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Sitting down for a meal, it's obviously a big part of anyone's life. We do it several times a day, every day. We do it for nutrition, of course, to give our body the things that it needs to keep going. But meals are also about, or at least they should be about, people coming together as well, a time for fellowship. So if we're fortunate, maybe we get some spiritual or emotional nourishment along with the physical nourishment at mealtime, especially if we're having a meal with loved ones. And you can learn a lot about a person when you share a meal with them. When I was still working and I'd interview candidates for a job, I really preferred to do it over a meal with them. For me, it was a much better way to get to know someone and find out if they were the right kind of person, the right kind of fit for the job opening that I had. It's certainly better than just sitting in my office and going over their resume with them. Now, I mention meals today because Luke's gospel contains a lot of stories of the life of Jesus that are actually centered around meals. For Luke, the meal is a symbolic of people coming together and sharing, of having fellowship. And as we see in the gospel reading today, Jesus himself could observe a lot about human behavior by watching people during meals. And we also hear in this gospel reading, people are watching Jesus as well. He knew that they'd be paying attention to him. And so he saw that this was definitely a teaching moment at this point in the gospel. The other thing about meals and banquets in Luke's gospel is that they are often symbolic of something bigger than the meal itself. Many times they symbolize what heaven actually might be like, these banquets and meals. And just look, for example, at the parable of the prodigal son. Now, this parable only appears in the Gospel of Luke, no other gospel but that one. And if we recall, when the, when the younger son, the, this lost son, this prodigal son, comes back to his father begging for forgiveness and mercy, what does the father do? He immediately assembles this, this great party, this great banquet for his son, this big celebration for him. And if you, and if you, and if you look at that, that this banquet symbolizes the heavenly banquet that anyone who approaches God and asking for mercy will receive, that they'll be welcomed into this heavenly banquet. And, and if you remember how the story ends, the father comes out of the banquet to talk to the older son because the older son is, is so upset at the younger son who's, who's wasted a lot of his father's wealth. The, the older son is, is staying out of the banquet. He refuses to join the banquet. So he's, he's actually staying, keeping himself out of heaven. He's re, refusing to join in this heavenly banquet because he cannot join and, and share in the father's mercy for this prodigal son. Now, if you look at what scholars to say about have to say about this particular passage from Luke's gospel that we heard today and the other readings that, that we have for today, they usually talk about humility and it, that it's a great virtue, humility is, and, and certainly it is. But sometimes people look at this gospel lesson as if it's something that came out of Miss Manners or Emily Post, that humility is, is kind of the socially acceptable thing to do, that it, people will think more highly of us. If we're, if we're humble and show humility. But if we reflect on it more deeply, we find that there's a lot more at stake than just our reputation as a nice and humble person. Because if we look at the other stories in Luke's gospel, we see that it has a lot of what we would call reversals of fortune in it. Situations where someone thinks they're on the top, but when all is said and done, they actually end up on the bottom. For example, let's look at another parable the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And like the story of the prodigal son, this, this parable of the, of the rich man and Lazarus only appears in one gospel. And you guessed it, it's Luke's gospel. And this is possibly the most dramatic story about a reversal of fortune that we hear in the whole Bible. Now when these two men die, Lazarus, who, who has suffered terribly in this life, goes to rest in the bosom of Abraham in heaven, while the rich man we don't even know his name. He, he seemed to do nothing but enjoy the finer things in this life, but he suffers in the afterlife. And we see that same kind of reversal in both parts of the gospel reading for today. In the first part, 
Jesus sees the people elbowing and jockeying for position, looking for a better place at this dinner that they're attending. And he kind of like, likens it to people who try to get the most favorable treatment in this world, especially at the expense of others. And he's telling us, when he sees this, he's telling us to be careful. That if we try to exalt ourselves in this world, then we may find ourselves being humbled in the world to come. And the second part of the gospel has a message kind of in the same tone, really. And in, and in a way, it's also symbolic of heaven. Now, is Jesus literally telling us to quit inviting our family and friends and loved ones over to our house for dinner? Well, of course not. This type of exaggeration was common speech in that part of the world at that time. People would exaggerate in this way so that their words would have more of an impact, so they would make more of an impression on their audience. But Jesus is trying to make a point here for sure, for the people at the dinner back then and for us as well today. He's telling us how important it is for all of us to have a special concern for the disadvantaged among us, a concern for them that is so deep and so radical that we look after their needs with just as much care as we would for our, the needs of our loved ones and our friends. And why do we do this? Why are we called to do this? We do it because, because we know, or at least we need to know, we should know, just how much God himself cares for the poor and the vulnerable among us. We heard it in the responsorial psalm today, Psalm 68, where it tells us that God is the father of orphans and the defender of widows. He gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. The Bible speaks often of the poor, the widow, the orphan, the alien, the prisoner. Now God loves everyone to the same degree, but he has a special concern for the welfare of those among us who are disadvantaged, those who are afflicted, who are vulnerable and persecuted. And God is looking for us to have that same kind of concern that he does, to see the face and the presence of his son Jesus in the poor and the lowly among us, and to recognize them as our brothers and sisters in Christ, to care for them just like God cares for them. Yes, there could be a reversal of fortune, just like the reversal of the rich man and Lazarus. And that's what Jesus is telling us in the gospel today. He's calling us to live lives of humility and concern for others, just as Jesus himself was humbled to come and to live among us. And we humble ourselves now in this life, just as Jesus did, so that we can share in his glory forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers to the Lord.
for the church, that we may grow in our awareness that everything is gift and that all we have and all we accomplish is a result of God's love for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exercise authority, that they may follow in the footsteps of Christ and reach out to those who are most in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who reach out to the poor and the outcast by offering food, clothing, and toiletries, that they may recognize Christ in all whom they serve, honoring the dignity of each person with love and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from storms, floods, and earthquakes, especially the people of Central Italy and Louisiana, may God's grace open the door for assistance and healing, and may they be comforted and strengthened by the prayers of this community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this parish and all who find a faith home here, may the light of God's love shine ever more brightly within our hearts and homes, bringing light and love into the dark corners of our lives and our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Sue Nix, Bill Brown, Enrique Estrada, Adelina and Earl Bene and Hazel Arrington, that they may rest in peace and that God will comfort and strengthen their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold within our hearts. Continue to show us your mercy and your love, and we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we proclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop and all those who, holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us are through this participation at the altar Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Remember especially Bud Edelman. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the way that we are, uh, the gift bearers are scheduled beginning next weekend. If your family would like to bring up the gifts, there will be a sign-up sheet on the uh, podium out in the foyer back there, and you're asked to just sign up right before Mass and then come back at the appropriate time. The sign-up sheet uh, for the traveling prayer chalice for vocations will be moved to the sacristy. Religious education registration for students in pre-K through eighth grade is taking place this weekend after Mass at the Welcome Desk, or you may register online um, under the Faith tab. In honor of the Year of Mercy, I will hear confessions Tuesday uh, from 5.30 to 6.30. Also, Tuesday evening at 6.30 in the formal room, we will have our last RCIA evening of inquiry, and that is for those people who are interested in learning more about the Catholic faith. Please check your bulletin inserts this weekend. Um, Archbishop Coakley has asked that we participate in a parish survey on disability. There's a hard copy of the survey in the bulletin, along with the schedule of the listening sessions that will be happening in conjunction with the study. You can also uh, find it on our website in the general information section, and you can do it on there. Also, uh, we will be needing people to feed the hungry at 12 o'clock today. Adoration tomorrow will not begin until 12.30 due to the funeral for Sue Nix. And now let us pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.